Okay, so welcome again to the to the session. Um, uh, this this um, um, session really goes back a long a long way uh, because Bertolt started um, a series of interviews with a number of us, um, probably more than a year ago, um, and collected a lot of interesting insights um, in 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 that process. Uh, and he's going to present this today. And 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 the organizers thought that it would be a perfect introduction to a, to, a, to a deeper discussion that we can have with a number of um, um, experienced colleagues here on, on a panel afterwards. So I hand over to Berthold and we'll have a panel discussion afterwards. Um, just just uh, to explain the format of the panel discussion, um, the idea is essentially that, that the, the audience is able to ask questions based on the talk or based on whatever they other, whatever else they want to know uh, to the panel and then the panel will Will answer these questions or give their opinions on these, um, and I will I will share this discussion. Okay, so think of questions to the panel while Berthold is um, speaking. Okay. okay, over to you, Berthold. Yeah, thank you, Raiko, and thank you, Timo and Fabio, for giving me the opportunity to present this work because I usually I intended to do this last year if there had been a. A regular conference uh, in real time uh, in reality and i decided no in in zoom i don't want to have it but now i'm thrown back to zoom but i think it it must be done now otherwise it's outdated uh, too much so the the topic of my endeavor was uh, graph transformation past present and future uh, today i will focus on present and future because the past is is gone anyway, and it's not um, much of interest, I think. Uh, just uh, a remark, this, this had been more actual last year. I would have liked to discuss this also with Hartmut, who's dead for quite some time, and also for with me, Mike, Michael, who's, who died la, uh, yes, one and a half year ago. Okay, um, so the motivation for my talk is rather uh, an observation I made in, in the last uh, real events we had on graph transformation there, we often had discussions over a coffee or a beer uh, and saying, oh, the GT community shrinks. And so, of course, one has to ask oneself, is this true? And if it's true, what needs to be done? And so um, I thought maybe due to the pandemic, Oh, no, no, it was before. It was before, yeah. So uh, I, I thought of uh, Raiko's uh, talk on in Eindhoven, where he, he with uh, Mariam and Lane conducted certain inquiries for certain tool usage in graph transformation and used this as a basis for a profound discussion. And I thought this, uh, I found this very interesting and inspiring. And so I've had said to myself, okay, I will do the same. And so my idea was to conduct interviews and this took place from March to June in last year. So in the first lockdown of the pandemic, then I compiled what the statements that I, uh, I found in the interviews. And so now today I will present these statements and afterwards in the panel discussion, I hope we will discuss them. Uh, yeah, so now and afterwards. Uh, and so my role is a bit queer. So I, I wrote under the title that I'm the compiler of all these statements and I'm also the presenter of all these statements, although not all of them would have been my statements, just because, not because I contradict them, but it's just the statements of the people I've interviewed. Okay, so it's a bit of a reporting business I'm doing today. Okay, so whom did I interview? These were, yes, um, nine members of the steering committee of ICGT, Andrea, Raiko, Barbara, Hansjörg, Fernando, Detlef, Arndt, Leila, and Gabi. Uh, and unfortunately, I wanted also to interview Andy, but he was too much involved in uh, online uh, teaching and so on because he was is a vice dean in Darmstadt, or used to be at that time. So, yeah, unfortunately, he could not join. Um, 
the topics of the interviews were uh, essentially four. One was the personal connection of the person to the field. Then I asked what is the essence of, the, of GT for this particular person? What does this person think of, the, of this problem of shrinking GT community? And also what the person thinks are the best achievements, the most important achievements and the challenges and prospects for GT. And the personal connection is quite interesting and was also fascinating to have these talks, but uh, I think it's irrelevant for this uh, event. And so I will just concentrate on the other things. Um, so I start with the essence of graph transformation, of course, uh, you cannot expect to be this to be very interesting to people who are, know the field. So there were certain statements about graphs being general and um, yes, ubiquitous and, and to be found in every textbook and so on. And also of graph transformation being fundamental computational model if you want to uh, transfer, uh, manipulate something that is more uh, complex than strings or trees and so on. So this was just a warm up also for the interviews. And um, of course, also people addressed advantages that they think uh, GT has. And among them are also the usual suspects like visuality, uh, generality, the strong foundations that we have, and um, a rather more special uh, statement by Fernando was that it's powerful enough, computationally complete, but on the other hand, not too powerful, not too expressive so that we can have uh, uh, useful analysis techniques like uh, conflict detection and rules and so on. Okay, um, but also of course, people addressed, um, yes, problems that we have if we go to such a general computational model. Uh, of course, it's more complicated to than strings and terms. And the other problem is that the graphs come in many, many variations and uh, almost every, yeah, every researcher uses his own variations or every application calls for different uh, variations. And of course, there have been some uh, ideas to overcome it by generic definitions. Keyword is adhesive categories and we have heard from others uh, today. Uh, but of course they are very abstract and for outsiders they may um, cause a push out scare how Arendt used to call it so that people are scared away by category theory. Okay, so this is about the essence and now come the achievements that we that I collected from the interviews. Um, and I just mentioned them and I will not spell out every sentence because that will be too much and you can read it. And many of them will be familiar to you anyway. So um, one achievement of the uh, of theory was uh, um, mentioned and this is the uh, generality or the abstraction from particular graphs. Again, the keyword is adhesiveness. And then a lot of uh, results concerning parallelism and concurrency were mentioned. And you know all these uh, so critical pairs and so on. Also the pro processes work on in PISA. Um, and then another branch there are quite some results in formal language uh, theory, extending it to graphs in particular based on context-free uh, notions of replacement, node replacement and hyper-edge replacement. And I deliberately left out our favorite co uh, contextual hyper-edge replacement. It, it is a bit more general. Uh, okay, but uh, and then, of course, uh, the, there's a lot of work or has been done a lot of work by Courcel and his uh, co-authors and, and uh, co-workers on monadic second order logics of, of graphs. So that this is also very well um, 
just established. And uh, in, the, in the whole, one remark was that our area has several important results rather than one excellent result. So it's, uh, yeah, okay. I, ju I just report on the, on the statements, of course. Yes, another um, branch of the uh, statements was concerning tools. Um, and there, yes, so we have developed several tools uh, in our area, but only few are still maintained and developed. And uh, another statement is that Henshin is quite popular in the model transformation community. Uh, if I had interviewed Andy, he would certainly also have pointed out that Emoflon is also quite popular and, and well accepted in the model transformation community. So there is there are tools that are still uh, very life, they're very much alive, but others are no longer developed and maintained. Okay, so now applications, what has been achieved with respect to applications. So the first group is a bit related to software engineering model transformation where many researchers of our field are now active. Um, so actually it's more or less a standard in certain branches of model transformation and triple graph grammars are particularly useful. And in this field or for software engineering, uh, it has turned out that uh, analysis techniques like critical pair analysis are also widely used and considered useful. <clears throat> so another statement was made that visual contracts, this was invented by Gregor and Heiko, I, I think, if I remember right, uh, were also considered quite interesting and relevant as a rule-based counterpart to UML. And then uh, more general things uh, like stochastic rewriting, Markov chains um, for bio biological modeling and string diagram and string diagram rewriting, and also model checking. Um, and of course, we also talked about the community and it, uh, it was mentioned several times that it's really a community and uh, to my, uh, my impression is it's often also like a family with all its drawbacks and advantages that you don't always like every uncle in your family, but okay, it's like that. And so it was also stressed that in our area, uh, theoretical people and practical people are cooperating considerably well so that there's no border or no strict uh, antipathy uh, between these uh, backgrounds and uh, in the at the beginning of the millennium or at the end of the last millennium we had a couple of um, AU funded working groups and, and other um, projects that deepened the cooperation at least in Europe and also the exchange of people and I'm just seeing Andrea and for instance Andrea is one of the guys who uh, stayed long time in Berlin. And uh, yes, so he's an example for this uh, extended uh, exchange and cooperation. Yeah, so visibility, I have made a distinction in, in analog or old school uh, visibility. And there an achievement was mentioned that ICGT is by now uh, well established and also some workshops have popped up and many of them have disappeared. At least we have GCM up to now. Um, yeah. And uh, on the other hand, uh, we have a handbook on graph transformation that is from 1997 and 1999. And afterwards we have several monographs. Um, the last one being the book by uh, Raiko and Gabi and they at least describe the state of the art of our field or the main, the, in, the, in the main figures or the main uh, concepts of, at least. And digital, digitally, 
yes, of course, we have a mailing list. We use it quite often. What we do not have is a website, or we do no longer have it. There was one in Paderborn and there was one in Leicester, but they disappeared or were captured, so they are not no longer vital anymore. I also checked, uh, this is, um, has been checked by me, um, that we, there are articles in Wikipedia and in English and German and also in French, but it makes the impression that they are inconsistent and incomplete and unbalanced. Um, and a very recent development uh, is uh, greater an online seminar with uh, discussion channels uh, on the MetaMost um, thing. Uh, and this has been quite successful to survive the pandemic. And I, I think it will also survive the, the pandemic, this greater seminar, because it's quite convenient to meet people or uh, listen to talks or, on new subjects every two weeks. Okay, so this is uh, where the achievements. And now the, the next item was the shrinking GT community. So what about that? So, um, and there are, have been general observations, specific observations and also objections to this uh, hypothesis. So the general observations were, yeah, that this is how life is. Communities grow and shrink and some even disappear. Uh, and so many other areas of theory do shrink as well and some even faster. So, and it's also astonishing that this community does exist for so long because it's quite, it used to be quite uh, small all the time. So the more specific observations Oh, sorry, that was too fast. Uh, of course, some dominant researchers that founded the community have retired. Some even died, unfortun died unfortunately, like Hartmut. Others have changed or widened their focus of research. So they are also publishing and working on other areas that are more or less related to our field. And another specific uh, observation by Arndt, and he has put it in a nice way, that's why I cited. So the low hanging fruit in our field have, have been picked and the medium height fruit has also been picked. And when we now go for the very high hanging fruit, this will interest fewer people. So that meaning that now our theory is quite established and we are now digging in the corners for uh, the last holes, this will interest uh, not so many people as maybe in the beginning. Okay, so there were also objections. Um, so some people tell, uh, said GT doesn't shrink, it, it just spreads overall uh, over other areas of um, theoretical computer science uh, because people can now publish on GT at many places because it's, um, yeah, you will always find a PC member that can review a paper at a conference uh, in theory even if this the topic of this uh, conference is not uh, graph transformation. And another remark was that uh, the community is good and, and well, but outsiders have always made uh, important contributions. So the community is not all. We need also outsiders that put some, some new insights into our community. And so the... Uh, the provocative, a bit provocative statement by Andrea was, do we still need a, a, a graph transformation community? That's maybe, should we uh, discuss? Okay, uh, now I come to the conclusions. Uh, no, no, not, sorry, not yet the conclusions, the challenges and prospects for the future that were mentioned. And there, um, of course, the, the same, um, categorization applies a theory and there the statement was the, the foundation seems to be almost complete and some even said you know it doesn't make sense to uh, dig the last holes if there's no need or no uh, requirement by some application to do so so there we are quite complete 
but there are some issues that are not so well developed like verification termination criteria for graph transformation systems, uh, probabilistic and randomized uh, graph transformation and graph programs, um, and also logics for GT that of course has also to do with verification and graph databases. So there people think are still, is still work to be done. Oh yeah, another one, Composition, compositionality. Um, and this is motivated by work, for instance, of Nick uh, in quantum computing. computing. We had a talk on concurrency that's also related to this question. Then another issue is graph abstraction, or it was raised and as an issue, graph abstraction the representation of many potential graphs by one representative. This was represented or was a topic in the talk of uh, Ira Fesefeld this morning. And also combining shape analysis with process analysis where I can't explain what this exactly means because I don't remember in which context this was mentioned. Maybe the interview person can clarify this if necessary later on. Okay, and rather a non-challenge um, was identified as well, and this is to invent new ways of graph transformation. And of course, as in every conference issue or in every issue of this conference, there are counterexamples for this. For instance, all these new uh, ways of graph transformation seem to appear. Um, and yeah, okay, it's like that. But it's not a challenge, but it happens all the time. Um, oh, what happens now? Ah, okay. Uh, and you can ask me later who, who made this statement because it's quite funny. Um, yeah, challenges concerning tools. Um, one was addressed and that means uh, says easy to use tools are a good light white access to GT for newcomers if they can play just play with systems. Uh, and tools should also connect to tools in other application areas so that people from other application areas see what nice tools or nice concepts we have that are implemented in such tools. Yes, we need more tools for verification, for verification GT systems. And one statement was that uh, a standard kernel language for GT would also be quite nice for communication or uh, yeah, in order to, to uh, make it more concrete what can be done or what is the standard way of doing graph transformation. Um, yes, for applications, um, there were several things mentioned, generation of models, meaning that uh, the usual model transformation uh, or the usual model definitions are quite good at ch checking validity, but are not so good at generating samples of valid models. Then modeling of processes. And again, I don't know exactly the, the intention of this statement. Uh, synchronization with triple graph grammars, this seems to sounds a little bit special. So again, I cannot explain this in detail. Uh, reverse the, Reversible circuits can be should be can be modeled or it can be investigated. Graph algorithms, graph databases, um, machine learning, quantum physics, and chemistry and biology. And in men, in the last two areas, there are certain work certain work has already been done. Okay, now comes uh, yeah an issue that has not so much been addressed in the other parts of, of my presentation, this concerns visibility of our field. Because uh, whenever we do discussed about the shrinking community, we always also discussed, are we visible enough or can we improve our visibility? Yeah, so the, and I just made a distinction between the aims we want to reach and the actions that might lead us to these aims. So the aims could be easy access to the field. This is of course, yeah, I will, I won't comment on the, on the statements, transmit the knowledge 
to future generation of researchers. This, um, yeah, this is, has a bit negative aspect. It almost, uh, yeah, sounds like a, please write up whatever you find out be before you turn off the light. But uh, okay, um, broaden the diversity of the community with uh, respect to nationalities and continents. So uh, up to now, uh, there is a certain yeah, over white weight in, in German and European uh, groups um, in GT. Yes, and the last point was avoid to scare people. And again, the push out scare, uh, even if category theory is an essential formalism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, visibility actions. So how can we make uh, the GT community more visible and uh, statements were made like as like the following, write a textbook for undergraduates. We do have many monographs, but we don't have such a textbook. Write survey articles to attract outsiders, uh, for instance, in SOSIM, um, which would address model um, transformation people and or write a, an article in computing sur surveys of the ACM that would address everybody uh, interested in computer science. And we could publish a regular uh, newsletter. Uh, we could publish a monograph on verification technique. Uh, but the statement was uh, also, it was also said maybe this is too early to do so. And, or even to uh, found a journal that, that is dedicated to GT. And again, this was also not considered practical at the moment. Again, okay. Um, now, uh, another aspect of visibility is that was mentioned uh, are events, um, a regular conference, of course, and a workshop like GCM were considered uh, valuable to con to attain attention to our field, and a statement was made that this idea presenting articles published elsewhere at our conference ICGT is also good to broaden our view. And of course, we could also offer tutorials at other conferences. And another statement concerns competitions like termination and conference contests um, to push uh, result, uh, research and to also tool for, uh, development. Again, this was a bit, um, yeah, there was also a remark that this, our community is quite small to, to feed such, a, such contests. Okay, communication. There were, yes, so certain things were mentioned, uh, communication with other areas like Petri nets, um, then showing people from application areas that how GT helps them to answer their, their research questions, either by writing papers together or by supervising a PhD as a second supervisor maybe. And of course, this is a big effort, but otherwise, uh, on the other hand, are also quite effective. Encouraging newcomers uh, by giving bonus points if they submit to ICG. Um, yes. This is rather an aim than an action, attract more scientific offspring to GT. You can't force people to be attracted. Uh, yes, provide lightweight access to GT with easy to use tools and pushing GT in the education area, also in schools. All these were concerned with communication. Uh, so, Doing all these interviews, I, I also had some ideas and I just mentioned three of them. Um, I think we should set up a GT website and keep it up to date. So otherwise it's not, not worth it. So it must, so we must identify a group that is responsible for maintenance of this website. And then it, I think it could be useful. Um, we, I think we should also consider to work on the web, the, the appearance of GT in Wikipedia. I don't know how this will work in co concretely, but I think it could be useful. Another issue that 
came to my mind is the steering committee of, G of ICGT, for instance, which is huge, but rather immobile. So, and I learned from the bidirectional computation, bidirectional transformation community that they have a different uh, pattern for the steering committee. There they say just the N, I don't know the exact number, N less than 10 shares of the last, the latest ICGT conferences are in the steering committee and all the others step back to the advisory board. And then the advantage would be that the committee is rather small, but maybe more active or more, uh, yes, can act, react faster or whatever. Okay, so these were my statements and now I come to the conclusions, which are, um, of course, rather short um, because it's not, it shall not conclude our session, but it shall be the starting point. And so let's discuss these observations and hypothesis, and of course also um, discuss the other opinions and statements coming from the panel or the audience. And then what my plan is to write a position paper where all these, um, all these statements are in some way uh, compiled. Uh, so I have such a paper already for the interviews, but uh, I want to round up it by the, uh, the uh, statements made in the discussion. And then of course, if we really are concerned about the future of GT, uh, then we could decide on further actions and take them. So uh, I met several people's, uh, yeah, several people helped me. And so I, I already mentioned Raiko and Lene and Mariam inspired me to do the interviews. I also thank the partners of the interviews for their patience because it took one hour in average. Uh, and uh, also I thank the COVID pandemic because otherwise um, I think I wouldn't have pursued this project. And hans uh, Kreoski advised me in the early stages of my uh, endeavor and he all, always encouraged me to continue. And last but not least, I thank Veron Stilger and Susanne Kost because they uh, gave me advice concerning interviews, even if I, I didn't follow all of them, but at least I could discuss with them. So thank you for attending so far. <laughs>